Dearly beloved, praise the Lord for the life that he gives us and praise the Lord for this season and praise the Lord for finding God episodes and praise the Lord that you and I are still alive. And therefore let us observe a moment of silence and pray. Father God in heaven, thank you for every opportunity that you give us to share your word and every opportunity that we have to interact with your presence. We pray that you bless our time together now in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, God remains our Father and we give thanks to him for the scriptures that we keep reading and because we, when we get there to read, we interact with him. We find what he wants us to do and through the Bible pages, we discover lots of things that God wants us to follow and do. In the previous episodes, we have looked at several biblical figures and there is where we base ourselves because these people that we talk about in the Bible, they were human beings like we are. Some of them give us good examples to follow those that did good and say, how can I be a person of an upright standing before God. And even, though, even when we talk about those that did bad, there are also examples to us because you ask yourself, how can I do otherwise? And so the moment we dive into these scriptures, they are all for our edification. And so this time, we are going to think about a man who was a very respectable, important person in the army of the Syrians. And we have been talking about Prophet Elisha. And this man that we're going to talk about is called army commander, called Naaman. Naaman was a Syrian soldier, an army commander in, at that time. And Prophet Elisha's time, he becomes prominent and the Bible is written, the Bible writes about him. And because of what he did, we learn some few things about him. But let us dive into scripture here. Just one, two verses. Second Kings chapter five. And we're going to read the two verses because that is what is going to form the basis of our meditation. And the Bible says that now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now this is where we are going to base ourselves. This man, a great man, that he is named he has the name Naaman. And when I searched around to find the meaning of the name Naaman, in their language, it means be pleasant. You know the biblical names, when you read every name and you search around, you'll find a meaning about it. And so Naaman was be pleasant. No wonder through him, God had given the Aramean army victory. And he was a great man and the bible says he was a valiant soldier and so when you read about him say yes a great man but the bible mentions but he had leprosy and leprosy was a skinny disease so dreaded disease so bad and even when you are so great like that you became a publican you became a despised person because remember during the time of Jesus this is when we, we read more about them and they um, there were also people that came to Jesus to be healed and because it the, the disease made them to be a despised lot it was so dreaded it was so feared because it was a very deadly disease you had we had during our time the previous years we had COVID-19 and anybody who had it you know um, you could be separated from your family you could be and things like that so Naaman respected highly regarded but because of the disease you know 
he was a second class citizen then because of what he was suffering from. Now, the Bible is mentioning about him and someone tells him to go and present himself before a prophet in Israel. And this is one of his slave girls in the house. So Naaman went and uh, told his master and he went to Israel to meet the prophet, the prophet Elisha. And when you read this portion, the Bible tells you that he went and found, yes, um, the prophet told him to go through a messenger. Tell Naaman to go and wash himself. Go to the river and dip himself there seven times and he will be healed. And the Bible says Naaman was angry because the prophet didn't come out to touch him. And, but his servants told him that supposing the prophet had told you to do something more difficult, wouldn't you have done it? And this we find in verse 13. And so Naaman went down to the river and dipped himself there. And the Bible says that uh, he dipped himself seven times and the man of God had, that had told him. And his flesh was restored. And he became clean like that. His skin became clean like that of a younger boy. Now friends, the interest in this man is because he was an important man and he suffered from leprosy, but the sources of information is something that actually that moved me very much. And great as he was, but with leprosy, Naaman leaves us great lessons, and especially in these episodes when we talk about finding God. And so Naaman listened to the sources of information. I mean, there were lowly sources of information. So we pick these lessons for us as Christians during our time. And um, Naaman was moved by the information and he went. So there is power in the word that he's spoken. And so God does his things in this way. So one thing that we learn from Naaman is that he was vulnerable. Great man, but vulnerable. Meaning that everybody has an issue. You can see very great people, very important people, be it in politics, rich people, rich men, rich women, but they have their silent issues. And so nobody is spared. Naaman was not spared from being what has happened to him. And so, though outstanding, though victorious, but he was vulnerable in one way or another. So the vulnerability that we suffer, you may think that actually you are the only one who is vulnerable, maybe because you are poor, or maybe because you are lowly regarded in society, but even important men and women, we are all human beings. And this is what brings us to the same level. And so I picked this one as a very, very important uh, lesson that all of us are vulnerable, despite the fact that actually maybe you have different levels of, you know, of classification, but vulnerability, if it is sickness, everybody comes to the same level. If it is death, everybody comes to the same level. And so this is what checks all of us, important as we may be, but or rich as we may be, or wealth as we may be, name them, but we all come to the same level here. And so we thank God that all of us are vulnerable. And therefore, God takes his position. Amen. God takes his place because he is the only one who is above and all above everyone else. And so everyone can be. And so we have read about some other figures in the Bible that suffered from leprosy, like Miriam, like, um, you know, Moses' hand when he put it in the pocket. And, um, you know, like even Gehaz, the uh, servant to Nahaman. But now, you see, this is the vulnerability of our bodies. So all of us at that level. And so we ask God just to look at each one with a merciful eye. Now, one other thing that we learn from Naaman, this man here, is that actually we have to deal with our pride. You know, when you are rich, when you are educated, when you are, I mean, the, the, we sometimes we suffer from this monster called pride. And Elisha had told Naaman, through a messenger. Go let him go and wash. 
And so uh, Naaman said, you know, but how can I? Uh, important as I am, how can I? Now we have to deal with that. And it is actually important. And the Bible talks about pride and shows that actually uh, pride goes before a fall. And this one, you find it in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Pride goes before a fall. Now each one of us is called upon to deal with this monster called pride. And until Naaman dealt with the pride, this is when he went down into the river and actually went down. And this is the point of humility. And so we call upon ourselves to be humble. When the message comes, it doesn't matter which source, but as long as it's a saving message. And you remember, remember this, the, 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 the prophet had told the messenger to go and tell Naaman to go down. And even his servants, Naaman listened to them because uh, they, they were the ones who said, but, but supposing the prophet had said, do something more difficult, would they have done it? And so all of us are called upon to deal with something that elevates us and listen to the message that comes from whichever source. And also, uh, one other thing that actually we find, Naaman story teaching us. Friends, there are ways that God works out his things, and he works things in mysterious ways that we can't understand. And I know Naaman was confused because he didn't know. He didn't know that actually God could heal him through merely dipping himself into the river. Remember, he despised the river. He said, but we have rivers like Arab and others in my land. Couldn't those ones be more important rivers than this one? Now, God works in mysterious ways. And so I'm learning that actually there are ways that God does his work. And so what I have to do, what you have to do is just come down and obey the word of God. And the, the prophet had spoken, so Naaman had to obey. And the moment he, he obeyed and came down, he was healed. And so remember that actually um, obedience, the Bible says, is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And so the moment he came down, he was healed. And because God's thoughts are higher thoughts, in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9 says, my, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. So friends, in this episode, Finding God, we learn lots. And one of the things that we are learning here is just obedient. As long as it is God is saying it, whether from whichever source. You know, God can use anything. During, uh, you know, Balaam's time, Balak and the, those stories when the children of Israel were, 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 were moving forward, a donkey spoke. So God can use anything to speak. A donkey spoke. Until this man had to do what the donkey was saying. So, friends, let's come down. And we need to discover humility in our lives and um, because it saves us. And may God enable us that there is merit in voices of those that are under us and especially those that have other people that are under us. Some of them are housekeepers. Some of them are, you know, our juniors. Some of them are our children, those of us who are parents. Some of them, you know, those little voices. So remember that God can use anything to warn us or to speak to us. And so Naaman's story tells a lot about our relationships with others, really. And being approachable, being relatable, you know, sometimes high offices hide us. Sometimes our age hides us because you can't listen to the, those ones who are younger than you. Sometimes our wealth hides us. And sometimes many things happen. But listen to me, that we need to be approachable. And it was because of the approachability that Naaman got his healing. And because of approachability, that's when this came to his life. And so sometimes life, um, life can mean to elevate us. But when we are all vulnerable, we need to listen to others. Now, God heals us. God brings his healing, his powerful message from sources that you may not think that actually may be so. And so there are some unlikely voices, unlikely places, unlikely situations, unlikely moments, but salvation comes. And so friends, I just want to end up by asking us that there are unlikely voices, unlikely places, unlikely, but salvation is there. 
And so when they need to be watchful, when they need to be, you know, to be obedient, when they need to be watchful, and so that God will always work with your faith. This is one important thing also. God works with your faith. It may be imperfect, like Naaman is, and I'm, I am thankful that many times my faith may be so imperfect, my, my faith may be so little, but you remember that God works with your faith, if, whatever it is. So have a little, have it, and you'll use it as your stepping stone to reach to your healing. And so just like the, the woman who suffered from hemorrhage, she just said, if I only touch, you know, your faith, whatever it is. So just ground it, just make it stronger and you'll reach your destination. So friends, Jesus mentions of Naaman a Syrian. You see, because of what he did, Jesus is in Luke, in Luke chapter 4, verse 27, he says, and there were many lepers in Israel, but Elisha, the prophet, he was the only one that Elijah the prophet, Elisha the prophet, you know, sent a word for healing. Now, may I be one of those that actually God finds out like he found out Naaman. May you be the one that actually God finds out like he found out Naaman and he was a level, he was, his skin came back. And may God heal us and may God heal us. We have so many things that are devastating us and may God do his healing work in our lives today. In finding God, there is life. And Naaman reached his life again respectable, important, but his skin was smooth and nice. And so may God enable us, enable you to be healed of whatever impediments that there are, and so that you do more important work for him when you are all uh, in one accord with him. He works with your faith. So go ahead and increase your faith, and so that actually you listen, you are relatable, you are approachable, and may God bless us today and during this portion of scripture that we have read, that God will speak to us more and more. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.